All right, good. So these are the this is the the clips that I got from my camera team, my shooting team. Uh, this is I'm gonna pretend this is my memory card. Before I even open up Premiere, this is what I'm gonna do. This is just how I work. I don't know if you'll do the same, but it's probably gonna be good. Um, number one, I usually have an external hard drive. I usually have an external hard drive, which I think hopefully all you guys have by now. Um, I didn't bring mine today because. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but I'll pretend that my external hard drive is connected, right? So what I'll do on my external hard drive is, so this is my first project. I'll probably make a project folder for myself. So on my invisible external hard drive, I'll make a project folder. I'll call it, I don't know, whatever I, whatever you want to call it, whatever helps you. But I'll just, Um, so there's my folder. This is my project folder. It's going to house everything that's related to this project. Um, the way Premiere works is you tell it where your project will be, and it's going to throw a bunch of files in there that you have no idea what they do, uh, but you just have to kind of trust uh, Premiere. Um, this is better than Final Cut, actually, because Final Cut, what, you, what used to happen was you would tell it different folders, and you'd have to manually assign, and then you wouldn't know where things went. Premiere is good in that you just tell it one folder and it handles the rest. Uh, so that's what you do. This is my folder on my fic fictional external hard drive. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my clips that was on my memory card. I'm going to put my assets that was on my memory card. All right. I'm just going to drag it into that project folder that I made. I'm going to put it all there. And then I think on if you're using our JVC cameras, it probably is titled clip or something like that. I'm not sure what it was called. It's probably titled something to, like that. I'll just throw that whole thing into the project folder that I just made. You guys get that right. That's pretty simple. Sounds easy, uh, but what most, what usually happens is that people will probably just, when they open up Premiere, they're going to import the clip straight from the memory card. And when they take out the memory card, the computer's going to be like, where'd your clips go? All right, so it's good to move that folder into your project folder. And I'll show you how it works in a second. I just want to make sure you guys understand the idea. OK, so I have my project folders. I have uh, my clips in that project folder. I'm going to open up Premiere. Okay. Be aware, Premiere has a lot of windows that you have to deal with uh, when you first start up. Uh, here we go, Premiere. You guys opened up Premiere. I usually use the spotlight to open up Premiere. But if you rather use an icon, that's fine. Uh -huh. All right, so Premiere opens up. The first thing that shows up will be a window. Um, I think some of you saw it. It says, ask for a new project or open up your old project. That's fine. That's good. My Premiere takes forever to open. That's normal. That's normal. Um, I don't know if I mentioned before, uh, but Premiere, one of the features of Premiere is crashing. That's normal functionality. When it crashes, you should be like, yes, I get to do it again. Uh, because usually your second time editing will be better than your first time. So when it crashes, you should be like, Awesome. Not a problem. Not a problem. Hmm, Premiere. OK, here we go. So a lot of you guys see this window. Um, so I want to start a new project. I just started. I want to start a new project. Fortunately, there's a little thing here that says new project. That's good, right? So we match. I have no idea what any of these things mean. That's OK. But this one, create new, new project. So everybody go ahead and click that. That should be pretty easy. And then another window. It looks scary. But it's OK. For this window that pops up, there's only two things that are really important to deal with here. And that's name and location. Name and location. Um, this new project name is essentially going to title your Adobe Premiere project file. Right? Adobe Premiere project file. So if you ever want to open up Premiere directly into your project, then you open up this file that you'll make. Um, so I'll just name it my, uh, I don't know. Uh, test one project, whatever you want. Test one project file. Be descriptive because you want to make sure uh, you know what it is. That's fine. And then also, this is the most important part. What you want to do is you want to tell Premiere where your project file is. If you don't do that when you make a new project, it's going to save your project files into um, the last folder that it was saving to. So if I don't touch that, 
where it's going to save it to it will be this folder here called my awesome sequence with audio, which is this folder here, when in actuality I want this folder. Right? So if you fuck that one up, you're going to have files in two different folders. So if you have an external hard drive, and then, this, and then the folder that this is pointing to is actually on the desktop, when you go to another computer, you're not going to have your edits. So this part's really important. All right? So make sure when you go to this window, uh, browse, and then find the folder that you made, that project folder that you made. So in this case, mine was on the desktop, and it was called 2015 uh, 0211 test1. And then just hit choose. Choose. And if you did it correctly, it should change. The location should change to that folder. Everything else here, I have no idea what it means. Just hit OK. Um, actually, I do know what it means, but you don't have to. Just hit OK. All right. And if things are OK, if everything works all right, what's going to happen is more windows will show up. But this time, like five or six of them all at once. And it will be the screen that you'll be seeing for 99% of your time in, when you're working in Premiere. Ta-da. So far, so good. Everybody good? If you guys see what I see, that's great. That's great. If you don't see what I see, sometimes it might look like something like this, or it might look like something like this, or something like, or actually it might even look like something like, maybe someone used a computer before you. It might look like crap. It might look like that, or whatever. That's OK. If you don't see what, you, uh, what I had earlier, just go to Window, Workspace, and then either go to Editing CS 5.5, or if it's already selected, hit Reset Current Workspace. And it's just going to go to the original layout. Um, this Editing CS 5.5 is the closest look to Final Cut Pro, the old Final Cut Pro, uh, 7 and before, and, and, and before that. Um, and that's what we usually work in. Uh, it's similar enough. Um, so there's that. And then one other housekeeping thing to do. Wait, so far everybody has the screen. Everybody's on this screen. All right. And then one other housekeeping thing to do that's kind of specific to this class is that I, work, I learned off of Final Cut Pro. I still haven't transferred over to Premiere. Um, so what I do is I change the shortcuts to be like Final Cut Pro. Um, if you'd rather use Premiere, that's fine. Uh, but I like Final Cut Pro. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you use. Because um, if you go into like a uh, Final Cut Pro editing suite, at least, bam, easy transition. At least you can change it. Um, for the sake of this class, at least it's easy for me if I just teach in Final Cut Pro style. Uh, but both can do uh, Adobe shortcuts and Final Cut Pro shortcuts should be fine. So to do it, click on Premiere Pro. And then keyboard shortcuts. And then just make sure um, it's, if you hit keyboard layout preset, you can select Final Cut Pro 7. It might be at Adobe Premiere Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. Um, if you like Final Cut, which I do, just click Final Cut Pro 7.0, and then hit OK. Cool. And so now we're editing using Final Cut Pro shortcuts. Uh, if you're completely against that, then you can change it back to Adobe Premiere shortcuts. Right. OK. The first thing you want to do is you want to start looking at your clips and start editing your clips. But I have no clips. Um, I've already put them in my project folder, but I haven't told Premiere where it's at. I haven't told Premiere where it's at. To do that, you need to import your video clips or whatever assets you have. To do that, you have, there's actually three, two or three options. I'll show you two of them. Um, one way, if it's more official, go to File, Import. File, Import, right? And what I would do, it, just to make it easy for myself, I would click, remember that folder inside the project folder that has all your clips? I called it clip. Just click on clip, 
just all right, and hit OK. And what Adobe Premiere will do automatically, or actually automagically, it will bring in that whole folder with the video files inside it, all together, like so. See, clip right there. And then inside it is all the video clips that I did. Yeah? Yeah? That's one way to do it. Um, if you delete your clips off of the Premiere, uh, this project folder right here, if you delete your clips, it's still in your hard drive. It doesn't take it away. Um, the other way to do it, if you're a masochist, you can select one folder <laughs> or one file and do it one by one. <laughs> that would suck ass. Uh, but notice I, I chose the, the file directly and not the folder, so it just brings in the file. All right. Um, you can also, same thing, you can highlight a bunch and do that. That works as well. All right. Uh, what I usually do is uh, I double click this in the project window here. I double click this empty space and it will bring in the import dialog. And you can do the same thing if I just double click that. Same deal. This window here in the upper left is called the project window. Um, it's where all your video files, all your sound files, your uh, text, uh, fi or text files, your sequence files, any, any file type that you're working with in your project um, will be held, uh, will be in this full or in this window. All right, so let me just do this real quick. I'll import that. And in this project window, you can um, do cool stuff to your footage, like, I don't know, I can even label stuff. Lavender, up to you. Labeling is really good, especially if you did several B roll or shots of the same. Like let's say you're doing a, a shot of people walking by and you did like 10 clips of the same thing and there's one clip that you wanted and you didn't label it and a lot of times you're going to be wasting your time trying to figure which one it was. If, if you just labeled it uh, to begin with, you uh, would save yourself a lot of time. All right, um, let me just quickly go through the different windows that we got here. It, this whole thing's called the workspace, this whole premiere uh, window. I think they call it a workspace. They call it a workspace. This is the project window. This is where you sort your files. You can move files. You can make another, they call it a bin, a folder. They call it a bin. You can move clips around if you wanted to. Let's say you had, uh, you had folder, or you had clips from day one, clips from day two. You can do that here. So for example, if I had day one, uh, I had day two, you could do that. Uh, you change the order of it should work as well. Yep, oops, I just nested that. No. Eh, whatever. Um, what else could you do? Yeah, you can rename stuff. You can reorder stuff. Uh, and after you've brought your footage in, after you've ingested your footage, probably the thing you want to do is you want to look at your footage, all right? That's usually what happens next. So if you double click on any of these clips, so I'll just at random double click, uh, this footage will open up in this window called the source window. You'll do a lot of, uh, you'll be doing a lot of work in this window here, the source window. So double click a clip, it should load up. All right, here's a clip. Um, there's a little, you guys use VLC or QuickTime when you're watching your pirated movies, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> I do it too. So you're familiar with these controls here, right? Um, you guys hit spacebar a lot to play. It works the same way. If you have this window highlighted, you can hit spacebar and you can play. And you can spacebar again to stop. Or you, mm, you can, if you don't like the spacebar, you, you can click on this button here. Um, but most of the time we're hitting spacebar. You can fast forward. Uh, or go in reverse. I think you could do J, K, or L. Yeah. All right. You can scrub forward. Or you can use your mouse to go forward and back. If you're familiar with VLC or any of those software, it should work similarly. Uh, if you delete off of here, you're not going to delete the original clip. It'll still be in your Mac or Windows folder, but it'll just not show up here. If it's gone, you can actually bring it back in. So don't worry. If you accidentally hit delete, which I just deleted, you can bring it back in. Right. So. Don't worry too much. Um, let me see. So this is where you do a lot of your um, 
a lot of your uh, cutting up your, well, not really, but you'll do a lot of cutting up here. Uh, before I move on, I got to do this next step, which is really important, because we haven't done anything yet. Um, we've looked at our footage in the source window. Uh, we see our footage. You can look at different clips here, right? We have lots. We have lots. Um, this next bit is important. You can actually do it uh, soon after you make a new project. But what we want to do is we want to make a new sequence. We want to make a new sequence. And down here in the timeline, it, what the timeline does down here is it's, uh, it looks at the sequence. Or that's where you edit your sequence. Uh, and I'll show you what the sequence looks like. If you double click, nope. if you go File, New, New Sequence. All right. I know it's a lot. You've already made a project file. You want to know, why do I have to make another sequence file? I'll tell you in a bit, but just trust me. File, New Sequence. Again, a window shows up. This is the scary window. This is the scary, the scary window. Because what shows up is a bunch of these presets, and it looks like mumbo jumbo. Um, it's kind of important to pick the right one. And fortunately, Roy figured out that for our, if you're using our cameras, if you're using our awesome JVC 150s that are superb, especially at night, <laughs> uh, this, the, you got to choose this, XDCAM EX. Right? If it's not chosen, XDCAM EX. All right, just trust us on that. 1080p, which you guys should all know the meaning of from reading the, the um, some of the, the websites that are on the Facebook page, 1080p, so it's HD res in a, a progressive format, 1080p. And then finally here, XDCAM EX, 1080p 25. All right, AJ, do that one more time yep. for all of us. All right. Especially so people over here. Well, not a problem. All right, so sequence uh, is very important. Yeah. All right, so go to File, New, New Sequence. Right? And that should open up. And just take us on faith. Click on XDCAM EX. Expand that. XDCAM EX? Yep. Okay. And then 1080p. Open that up. And then finally, XDCAM EX 1080p 25. Um, the 25 here means 25 frames. Um, we live in a PAL region, so our cameras are set to either 25 or a multiple of, in this case, 25. If you were in the US, you'd probably use 30. Or if you were working on a film, you might do 24. But for us, 25 is fine. Um, Everybody get that? This is important to set it up in camera menu before you shoot. Mm. Otherwise, we'll have issues when you're out there. <clears throat> All right. And then the sequence name, my first sequence, I guess, whatever you want to, my first sequence. Right, name that, and then you should be good. You should be good. Everybody follow okay so far? All right. If you get this step correct, then a lot of things should be okay. Uh, you shouldn't have too much trouble later on. If you forget this step, then it's fixable, but then a lot of other windows will show up and you'll be like, the fuck, AJ, help. So hit okay. And what will happen is, in your project window, remember that project window on the side? On the side it makes another file called My First Sequence. My First Sequence. Yeah, My First Sequence. And if you notice, the timeline here kind of looks like, uh, I don't know. I mean, you guys have seen what this looks like. If you worked on, in, in GarageBand or iMovie, it looks like this, a bunch of horizontal lines. This is where you do a lot of your editing in this window, the timeline. Everybody get the timeline or a sequence in the timeline opened up? Right? And uh, just to show you something really quickly, the reason why we make a separate sequence uh, instead of like just using the project is that you can actually make multiple sequences. Let's say you're working on a sequence and you're like, wow, this is, this is OK, but let me try an alternate version of the sequence without having to make a new project. You can make a second sequence right, uh, without having to start over and ingest footage again. Right? So that's why you can have multiple sequences. That's why you, you can make file new sequence and make multiple ones. That's why, if you're wondering, if you're wondering. Any questions so far? So far, it's easy, right? It's like, yeah, hey, this is easy. This is not bad. All right. Good. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to look at a clip. One of these clips, one of these awesome, I'm going to try to find the most embarrassing clip 
What's embarrassing here? Uh, you know, any clip, doesn't matter. Okay, here's one. And then I'm gonna look at it. I'm gonna look at it. So you guys know how to look at a clip, right? I would use, I can either scrub through it by uh, using my mouse, or I can just view it by hitting the space bar. Let's see. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, um, so that's the clip. It's okay, I guess. I can use that. Um, hey, AJ, mm -hmm. explain the principles that we're looking at here, though, with the different um, mm -hmm. kind of layering here, because video one, audio one. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, so okay. The, perfect. The uh, yeah, actually, I was going to get into that, especially with the audio, uh, but that's a perfect segue. Um, all right, so you guys see here on the timeline, right, my first sequence, you have this V1, A1, A2, A3. V1, V1, um, V probably stands for video. And the A probably stands for, right? Uh, A1 probably stands for audio one. A2 probably stands for audio two. Uh, there, there you go, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, perfect. So you have multiple tracks, multiple video tracks. Um, for the video, why would there be a V1? and more. Uh, sometimes you're going to be working in multiple layers of video. Maybe you have an interview track going on and you want to layer B-roll on top. Then that's why you might have a V2. Uh, or sometimes you might have an interview and then you want to put uh, a lower thirds, some text at the bottom. Uh, you might put that on V2 or higher. Right? It, works, it works in layers. You're looking downward. If you're looking from above, you're looking downwards. You'll see whatever the top layer is. Right? And then A1, A2, A3, and so on, it refers to, you know, um, our cameras do two tracks of audio. So when you bring it in, uh, and this part's important, when you bring it in, you should have two tracks. Oh, look at this. This is great. Perfect. You should have two tracks, right? And you might be thinking, AJ, you just dragged in your, your clip and there's only one track of audio. Good, good, good observation. Perfect. Perfect observation. Um, there should be two tracks, and we're not getting the two separate tracks. What's happening here is um, Adobe is mixing our two separate audio tracks. And this is more a problem with the JVC, not so much about most cameras. I don't know what the reason is, but I'll show you how to fix it. I wish Kev was here so you can see the step. Anyways, all right. Um, so before you actually bring in this clip into Adobe or into the timeline, you have to do this next step. You must. Must, 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 must. Every single class in the history of, since we started using Adobe Premiere, be it master's classes or undergrad classes, they will always uh, forget this step. Hopefully, you guys won't be that class to forget. Hopefully, you guys will remember, so there's a bit of pressure. But this is the step. Every time you bring in footage from the JVC 150, if you use this camera, you should do the following step. Every time you bring in new footage. So you just came back, your cameraman uh, gave you the, the memory card, you ingested the clips into Adobe Premiere. This is what you do. You must, 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 must. Highlight all the clips that you just, uh, highlight all the clips that you just brought in, right? Highlight them all. Trust me, highlight them all. Highlight them all. All right, when you highlight them all, I'll show you the next step. Everybody forgets this. Um, and it's gonna, f it's gonna screw you up big time when you start editing your audio. So don't mess up this next step. Highlight all the clips. Right click on the clip. Psst. All right, just right click on the highlighted bit. Modify. Right, modify. And then audio channels. Modify audio channels. What we're doing here is we're telling Premiere, hey, Premiere, I did record two separate channels of audio. Do not put them together because it's going to fuck me up later on. Um, so I'm telling you right now to, to figure it out. This is what I'm doing. I'm separating my audio channels. So you get this modify clip window here. And then... Let's emphasize that point again. Mm. Because this is something that everybody messes up. Yeah, if it, what we're trying to do is we're trying to separate Actually, we're not trying. We are separating the audio channels. We're telling Premiere, dude, do not muck this up. I, I shot with two separate uh, channels of audio. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Think about what we talked about uh, initially during our sound class, that you have different channels, right? You're in the plenary. This allows you to manipulate the different channels rather than mixing them together right away. Yeah. Let me just show you what happens if I don't do it. Um, there's ways around it, but we're showing you the easiest way uh, if you follow ours. If you don't do it, what's going to happen is you have video one, and then you have audio one, the left and right channel. And if you want to cut your audio, it's going to be a pain to try to separate it. Uh, there's going to be extra work involved to do it. Um, if I wanted to cut that up or manipulate it, there's nothing you can do. Or there's something you could do, but it's not easy. So uh, what we're showing you here is we're telling Premiere how to automatic, automatically um, separate them. So right click, modify audio channels. You get the modify clip window. And then what you should do is click mono. I think it's mono, preset mono. That should work. I hope it works. Preset mono, and then hit OK. Hit OK. Um, because Premiere is so obvious, it, not, it doesn't look like anything happened. It doesn't look like anything happened. But if you did it correctly, and I hope I did it correctly, oh, wait, let's do that again. OK, hold up, hold up. Give me one second. Why didn't my? If you guys bring it in, do you guys get two audio tracks? Cause mine just mucked up. Let's try that one more time. Modify audio channels. Oh no, should be right. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. Okay. Uh, reset. Okay. Uh, let's do that again. Modify audio channels, mono, preset mono, OK. Then if I pick a clip, OK, good. All right, there was my clip that I had. Where'd the woman go? Can't find her. OK, here it is. If I bring it in now, you'll notice, you'll notice at the bottom, it's separated into two channels. Do you guys see that? Now I have this channel here and this channel here. Did everybody get that? <laughs> if you don't, uh, let us know so we can uh, help you figure it out. This one's really important. Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. OK, cool. Uh, this step I really want you guys to get down. All right, we'll get to you. What happened? Uh, let me see. So for example. If you don't do this step successfully, there you go. You have to do it again. It's there. You have three. That's right. Yours. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I don't. There, oh, what's wrong? What happened? That's good. Oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, I think because you just opened up. Uh, I'll talk about that. You're okay. Okay. So far, everybody looks okay, you know? Oh, you're okay. Oh, okay, I'll show you guys. Oh, what is... Oh, that's okay, that's okay. You just didn't drag it far enough. That's fine. I don't know why it's... That. Oh, okay, that's good, that's good. Perfect, you guys are good. You guys are good. Well, not bad, not bad at all. Very, very strawberry good. Oh, I'll show you, I'll show you, not a problem. Good questions, good questions, excellent, excellent. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. What happened? Oh, it's not working? She just set it up here. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so. Just pull it in. Oh, okay. I'll just do this real okay. quick. Modify. I don't know why it's been doing that. It seems like a glitch. Okay, slow that down okay. just a little bit so she can catch that. Okay. Um, so it's, it might say use file. This is preset mono. Yeah, so these things should all change. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna hit OK. Uh, now I'm just fine. I'm just hit yes. Okay. When you bring it in just now. Drop, yeah, dragging the clip down. There you go. Now we have three. Now we have one, two, three. Oh. And I'll show you how to expand it right now.
Um, so here's a question that everybody's asking. Everybody wants to see a little thumbnail inside their uh, inside the video track, audio track. It seems like everybody. Yeah, so you, it's a good thing to see those little uh, thumbnails because it makes it easier for you guys to figure out what clip that is. It's very easy to do. It's kind of, it's fairly straightforward. Um, if you want to make this bigger, you can physically make this bigger by over here, there's this line right here. Your icon will change if you hover over it. Drag and hold it, bigger. All right. Same thing for here, for the audio tracks, you can drag it bigger, drag it bigger. All right. If, it's, if your clip looks like this <laughs> and you can't tell, you can drag this and make it bigger. All right. So those are ways to make the, the, the timeline or the workspace make it easy for you to uh, view it. All right. So I'll do that again. I'll do that again. I'll do it again. If this is what your, your track looks like and you want to make it easy for you to figure out what that clip is, if it looks like this, it's like worst case scenario. Um, you can, down here, there's this bar that lets you scroll around your timeline. All right, you see that? You can actually change the length of it to see more of the clip. Right. You're not changing the, the duration of the clip because if you notice the numbers on top, will just move along with it. And then the height of it you can change too, like so. Cool. If you have a short project, you can see more of your, your timeline without a problem. When you get to longer projects, documentaries, mm. you're going to have to see less of the icons. Yeah. For the most part, for this, you might have seen uh, images of other timelines that have like 16 tracks of audio and like four, eight tracks of video. For the most part, for this class, you're not going to be really working with more than three or four audio tracks, not more than two or three video tracks. Um, and then your final piece should have really only two or three video tracks and just two audio tracks. Ideally, one video track, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, so everybody has that view. Everybody's cool, right? And just like the, the source window up here, if you click on the timeline and hit spacebar, you, you can view whatever's in the timeline in this, pro, it's called the program window. Whatever's in the timeline, the program window will show as the final output, right? So if I scrub forward, it will move to that bit, right? See it? So the program window shows whatever is on the timeline. Essentially, whatever's in the program window, that's what your final output will look like. Should look like. Not always the case. Right? Cool? Cool, cool, cool. All right, so you can hit spacebar. Um, if the clip here is different from this, that's OK. That's OK. All right? If I don't like this clip right here, I can delete it. All right? So far, so good. If you're confused, feel free to raise your hand. If you're confused, not a problem. Not a problem. All right. If you don't like that clip, you can click on it, delete it. Was that so far? So far, so good. If you're not, feel free to ask. Feel free to ask. Do you want us to repeat that step again? Are you good? All right. All right, so a lot of that was really just housekeeping, a lot of like just set up stuff. So let's actually look at cutting up stuff, right? Let's, let's get in there and cut up stuff. All right, so I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to choose, I don't know what the clip is. Oh, he's just standing there. Oh, out of focus. That's a bad clip. We have, um, we have a walking clip. Yeah. Yep. Let's try this. <laughs> okay, let's just use that. Uh, that, that could work. Okay. OK, so here's the first clip I'm going to use. I, I haven't really looked at the, the stuff, but I'll just pretend this is what I have to work with. I have this uh, clip of Hiram walking, right? Looks like this. Walks. <laughs> OK, all right, so 
Obviously, for this clip, I don't want the ready and the OK, right? I don't want that. I don't need to put it in my timeline. I know it's, it's useless. So this is what I'm going to do, usually. Um, so I'll start, let's say, so. Let's just make a point on the sound, too. Do you mm. hear that kind of heavy background noise mm. as opposed to his steps? You like his steps. We hear that, especially if there's no eternity going on. We're doing one all that background noise. Now, if they're separated, we're good. If not, mm. bring both of them down. Yeah. In this case, you probably only use the top mic anyway, so it's all there only, right? So, anyways, we'll see. So, anyways, um, so I'm gonna look at this. Okay, so that beginning part I don't want, right? So I want this is what the beginning of what I want right here. Let's say right here. So I'm gonna tell the computer, hey computer, this is what this is the the first part of the clip that I want. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell it this is the it, we call it the in point, in 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 point. So what you do is you hit I, the, the keyboard letter I, I for in, right there. Or if you like the mouse, you can hit this button, mark in. And that's telling the computer, hey, computer, uh, this is the start of the clip that I want. Before that, I don't care about. But from here on, this is what I want. So what, it, what the computer does, all right, I got you. So it highlighted everything from here onward, all right? Um, and then actually, I don't want everything up to the end. I want everything up until before he says, OK, right? So I can play it all the way up to there, or I can just bring, drag it over. All right, so OK. He's like, he's like uh, Batman, OK. So just pay attention to him now. You can reset this on your own in a second. Mm. Just watch this. And then hit. So if, uh, if marking in is I, I for in, and I want to mark an out point, the shortcut would be? Oh, perfect. O for out. Uh, right? So you see what happens. The computer highlighted this where I marked in, and then it highlighted, or it just marked where I marked out. And everything in the middle is highlighted. So when I bring it into the timeline, it should only bring whatever's been marked in and marked out. Right? Or whatever between the in and out points. Yeah. And this is for both the video and the audio that's associated with this clip. So when I bring it in, you'll see, ta-da, right? And then if I play it from the beginning, right, up until where I told it out. Um, you'll notice there's the two audio tracks that are that's part of the JVC. Even if you don't have audio input one plugged in, like so here, it's still going to bring in an audio track, all right? It's still going to bring in an audio track. This audio two refers to the top mic, all right? Remember the top mic on top. Um, and audio one is what our interviews would be. There was no interview in this clip, so there's obviously nothing there. Um, if I play that without, I can actually mute that. All right, there's nothing. I mute the other one, there's nothing. No, yeah, that's fine. All right. Cool. All right. So on your clips, give it a try. Try to find a clip where you can, er, that has a bit of video that you like. Mark the in point, mark the out point, and bring it into the timeline. Give that a try. If you can master that, you've mastered pretty much 50% of half of editing, which is <laughs> like 20 hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, think about the principles that we talked about. Your editing, you know, when you choose where to begin, you know, are you going to choose the middle of it, an action or the beginning of the action? Try to find the beginning of the action um, in your clip, and then when you edit, the natural out point. All right. Um, so I couldn't find a good walking sequence from my first day of shooting, so I went out for a second day of shooting, and I got these clips. Uh, uh, there's a bit of a better walking sequence we've got going on. Um, so here's an action I have. I have this uh, girl here. I don't know if you see it. Let me just drag it bigger. Uh, hold up. OK. Uh, she is walking. I don't know. <laughs> She's walking. And she forgets her, her, she drops her keys, and she moves on. Now, 
I can have that whole shot in my, my package as one long shot, but you probably got really bored watching the whole thing, right? So to make it more interesting, you can cut it up into, say, a two-shot sequence, for example. Um, and so what my camera uh, lady did here was, uh, for this sequence, let me just drag this back up. <sighs> Crap. OK. Um, she has that shot. That's like the, the whole shot. And she actually, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wrong one, day two. She actually did a little close up of the action as well. Uh, cancel. All right. Sorry about this. This is what's going to get time consuming when you actually do edit, finding the shots that you need. Mm, I didn't label them. Um, she also, what's it called? Uh, let me just clear this real quick. Mark and clear. OK. Um, she also did a little close up of it as well, right? Right, so I can use that. Uh, so, like we did earlier, I'm just gonna hide. Let me show you how the process works. So I like that. This is the whole shot right here. Right, this is the whole. I'm probably gonna want. She's walking here in I for in. All right, probably want that. O for out. Maybe a little closer. I can drag that in. Bring that in. Right. This is what I have so far. She's walking. This is my person walking. Do, 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 do. Oh, she dropped it. And then the next shot, maybe the close up. All right. Oh, OK, let's do that again. I for in. And then, you know. You've got to look at her feet and look mm. at the position of where she's at to match it up with the shot previously. Mm. You know, otherwise, it can look like. Um, like, it looks like that. That's <laughs> She just dropped her keys twice, right? That's fine. You can still uh, mix, uh, mess, uh, mess with it. If you brought in your footage after uh, messing with the in and out points into the timeline, you can still drag the end of it. You can still drag the end of it. Right, so she dropped it. So, whoa, look at that. It's like reverse gravity. You can still move it over. <laughs> oh, right, this is kind of, do you guys, do you guys see the continu continuity error? <laughs> <laughs> continuity. Yeah, continu continuity error. She walks with her right foot, and then it's her left foot. <laughs> but if you didn't notice it, if you didn't notice it, I'm safe, right? If you didn't notice it. Yeah. But there you go. Uh, let's just say that it was the right foot. That's fine. But I have this other, other tip for you guys when you're shooting to think about. Just watch this two-shot sequence that we just made. Pretend the feet are correct. Just pretend. All right, that's OK. Oh, hold up. You don't see the whole thing. All right, hold up. There you go. OK, there was an issue there, right? Do you guys see what, hap what happened at the end? She stopped without leaving the frame. That actually makes it really hard for us to edit, because if you try to cut in the middle of that, it looks weird. You want to make sure she fully leaves the frame, and then you can cut to another clip. Remember that shot of, uh, oh, here we go. So here's this long ass shot of Hiram. It's 18 seconds. 18 seconds of him walking. And then I think it pans over, right? And he's, you're letting him, not, you can't cut yet until he leaves. Yeah, so I mean for that tracking shot, you can just let him leave the frame earlier and you can cut to something else quickly. Afterwards. So for this shot, actually, I noticed that my camera person actually reshot that bit where she does walk off. All right. So I can now probably use that. If the camera person had shot this closer up mm. without the legs, it would be easier for AJ to cut it down. Yeah. You see that? So let's try that. You don't want to have to match if you can help it. You, know, you want to give yourself options. Yeah. So I'm just going to pop that in there real quick and see if that works out. Yep. And then she leaves frame, and then my next shot, because she left, can be anything else afterwards without having to worry about it flowing correctly. But that was just two shots right there. You guys have two shots that you guys can put together, an action of some sort that you can put together, walking. You want to give that a try? Take a few minutes. All right. Uh, let's say you're happy with your sequence and you want to export. 
there's a couple of things you guys have to check before you actually do export. Uh, first, when you're editing, or check your timeline, see if there's no extraneous clips hanging around. So in this sequence that I have here, I have this nice, cool little two-shot sequence. All right, that's fine. That's what I want. Great. Oh, it's still going. Why is that? That's weird. Well, if you hit Shift Z or Shift Z uh, on the timeline, what should happen is it will show everything, all the clips in the timeline that's in there. So if I hit Shift Z, oh, I had some clips at the end that I forgot about. All right. So if you don't get rid of that, or if you don't tell Premiere, hey, I don't want that, then when you export, you're going to have this long clip. Or you're going to have these, you're going to have this, what, 40 seconds of black there, all right? And your file size is going to be bigger and all that jazz, and it's going to suck. So make sure that you get rid of anything you don't want to export. So in this case, I'll just delete this. Oops. All right. And then that's fine. Go to File, Export, and then Media. Hmm. File, export media. Yep. File, export media. And then there's a couple things that are pretty important. For our purposes, you can choose on this right side of the window under format, just choose H264. And, and then preset, go down to YouTube 1080. It seems to work well for us. It does compress, but for us, it's OK. YouTube 1080p should be OK. All right. So preset H or format H664, preset YouTube 1080p. And then the other important bit is this output name. This is probably the most important part, output name. Uh, it doesn't look obvious, but if you click on this blue text, Right. In this case, my first sequence.mp4. Click on it. This is where you choose where you want to save the file and what you want to name it to. Um, otherwise, if you just hit export without clicking on that, you have no idea where it's going to be saving to. So, um, click on that. Name it. See right here, it's going to save to the Roy folder. I have no idea why it's the Roy folder. I didn't choose Roy folder before that, um, so it's always good to double check. In this case, I'll probably put it in my. Um, up. If you click this, it can actually open up the full save dialog box. I'll put it in my folder that I made earlier. Here you go, test one. Uh, final awesome sequence. Okay. And I hit save. You haven't saved it yet. Only when you hit export down here will it start uh, doing its thing. And here's the thing when you hit export, don't think that you're done already. Sometimes it might take a few minutes or longer to actually generate your video. So once you hit export, you still have to wait with your computer uh, and, and pray that nothing uh, messes up. In this case, it's only a few seconds, which is good. But if you have a, a longer masterpiece, it might take longer. If you have effects and, 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 and fancy stuff going on, it'll take much longer. All right, so you want to check where your file is. I put it in my folder, test one folder. Here it is. You should always play it. Before, you, uh, before you're done with it. So I'll double click and open it. That looks about right. Great, all right, so that looks good. Uh, I'm good to go, and then you can finally submit it to wherever you need to submit it to. Any questions? Any questions? Everybody got that? Not too hard. So just think of kind of the, the sequence in what you're doing here as well. You had to ingest the video from these clips off your desktop initially. You modified them, edited them, and now you've got to export them back out. Now as a movie file, all those together the way that you want it. Yeah. Um, one thing to note, actually very important, um, remember that test one project file we made? That is not your video. That's just a list of instructions that Premiere uses to kind of look at your video. Uh, if you give us this as your final file, it, 
it, it's going to give us nothing, right? Note that it's only 14 kilobytes. That is not a movie file. From your pirating, well, from my pirating experience, I know like a minute of video is much bigger than 14 kilobytes. So um, yeah, if your file looks small, it probably is not the right file, right? So in this case, this, uh, how many seconds is this? This is like 15 seconds or so. That's 18 megabytes already. So yeah, if it looks small, it probably is too small to be true. So. Cool. Okay. All right. One last thing. Just yep. The little time that we have, AJ. Let's huh? just show up a quick um, interview edit. Okay. Um, Do we have anything that we can actually use there as a clip? Uh, I have a clip of a guy talking. I think the audio is just showing them the audio of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should be fine. At least. Okay. Um, so. We're, we're going to go over this again. In the yeah. Next, at any session, but I just want to expose this to you. Um, All right. So really quickly, um, my camera people came back with an interview. Um, I, in I put the video into my into Premiere. Again, modify audio channels. Have to do that. Preset mono. OK, always have to do that. So I get my two separate audio tracks. Otherwise, if you shot with two different microphones, the whole point has been lost uh, if you don't do that. All right, so here's an interview. I don't know what it's about. Ugh. All right. All right, so we have uh, someone talking at the beginning, asking the question. All right, so he talks, he talks, he talks, he talks. Um, I, Can anybody tell like, which mics you think those are on? Uh, hand mic. Just hand yeah, mic. I, I will show you what it sounds like. Oh, it's going to be hot. All right. Uh, uh, my, my biggest issue with this clip, real quick, notice here on the right side, this is another window. This is your, your audio levels, your meter. It's, it's hot. It's too hot, actually. It's red, right? So you don't want that to happen. You want, they probably had the levels too high adjusted so that it's not going to be always in the red. But that's OK. We're going to show you what it sounds like. I'm going to take out the interview voice real quick. All right, Jay. Yeah, whatever. Okay, in, I free in, and then just randomly over out. I'm gonna drag it in. You guys know how that looks. Check that out. Uh, good stuff. Let me just make that bigger. All right. So, if we know how we set up our cameras, we have your video track. That's obvious. And we have two audio tracks here, right? And the way we teach you guys is we have audio one or input one is your interview mic, and then input two, if you don't have a second like uh, voice is your top mic or uh, your effects mic or whatever. And in this case, both mics are playing, right? And it, and it sounds like, let's be honest, it sounds like shit at the moment, right? There's there, the person's talking, and then you have the, the, the ambient sound going on, and your viewer's thinking, what do, I want to, what, the, what do you want me to listen to? I have no idea. Fortunately, because you separated the audio tracks, uh, because you used two separate mics, Hopefully this works. Um, let's listen to each track individually. We can do that because we separated it. First, we'll uh, take out audio one and listen. So if I take out audio one, which is our hand mic in this case, we're listening to what then? We're listening to the yeah, the camera mic or the top mic. Let's listen. I haven't listened to this before, so I'm only this is the first time. I'm hoping it works. I know it works. All right, that's the top mic. Sounds like crap, right? So if you go out in a noisy area with the top mic and you do an interview and you're not that close, it's going to sound like that, basically unusable. Or usable if you have nothing else and it's a really good interview. But now if we mute audio two, nothing, obviously, because both are muted. Uh, only audio one. This is just the hand mic. Oh, please, I hope it works. Ready? Oh. That sounds pretty good, right? Right, right. Not bad, not bad. Uh, so that's what happens if you use a dedicated or a, the proper mic for the for the job. Um, yeah, and also that's why it's important to separate your audio channels. If we didn't modify our audio channels, then you're gonna have to pan left, pan right, do this magic to try to separate it. 
uh, by doing everything at the beginning, every time you bring in new clips, you'll save yourself the hassle of having to separate your audio channels each and every time. Um, and it's super simple that way. And in this case, because um, I'll just show you a quick trick in the last minute we have left, but we'll show it to you next time. But uh, what you can do is, since we don't need that uh, a top mic here, you can actually delete that bottom track. And in this case, if you click and delete, everything's gone. But if you protect your tracks, like so, there's these little locks on the side. You might be wondering, what are those padlocks? Why are there padlocks? It means I can't click anything, right? But if I keep this one open and click that, delete that, and now I only have, voila, right? Ooh, magic, right? And you'll find out more next time when you come back to class. <laughs>